Hi everyone, it's Lindsay with High Altitude Astrology. And today I want to discuss Chiron in the sign of Aries. And I have found an interesting article that I want to use as a bit of a outline to discuss Chiron and Aries. And I want to first of all give credit. It's from a website called wiseskiesadvice.com. And this particular article is written by Tiffany. And she points out, as you can see in the title here, that Chiron moved into Aries in 2018, and it's going to be there until 2027. So we've got a length of time that we're going to be experiencing Chiron and Aries and have a lot of opportunity to get to know what it's all about and to ultimately hopefully uh, do a lot of healing in the process because that's a lot of what Chiron is all about. And just more specifically, uh, Chiron moved into Aries in May of 2018 and it exits in April of 2027. So the title of this article is Chiron and Aries, a comprehensive guide to overcoming your karmic patterns. Here, uh, Tiffany writes about what Chiron is, and she, she describes it as, have you ever found yourself in the same situations over and over again, or noticed patterns in your relationships? Have you ever been thoroughly ready, to, uh, ready for a move, a change, or a breakthrough, and at the same time completely stuck? Have you ever felt that quote, no matter where you go, there you are. There is a part of each of us at times that feels small, vulnerable, eternally stuck, or deeply afraid. These pains, these pain points are signals from Chiron. His message to you is a wake-up call. It's time to begin your quest to heal wounds, patterns, and beliefs from the past. So that's, in general, what Chiron symbolizes. And it's about healing. Now, she talks about it being discovered in 1977, and it's actually nicknamed the Rainbow Bridge because its orbit is between Saturn, which is symbolic of the old, and Uranus, which is symbolic of the new. What I'd like to add is that Uranus is this energy of awakening. It's this energy of waking up to. It's an energy of, of seeing things in an extremely different way than we ever have before. So I find it interesting that Chiron is located in between these two energies because I feel that that waking up to is a part of the healing process of Chiron. It, it helps awaken us to a new perspective but it's even beyond a perspective because it's not like something you learn in a book and you're like oh okay now i'm looking at this differently it's like a literal change in the um consciousness a change in our consciousness that that all of a sudden is is there and offers us really a key as they say about chiron to moving forward in a way that we had never seen possible before. And a lot of Uranus energy, it really is, it's a mental energy. It rules Aquarius, which is an air sign. And it, it has a lot to do with progress and innovation and science and, and the future. So, so something about Chiron and this healing, it, it really helps us to look at the future in a different way. And I think that's important to understand about Chiron because um, it has this kind of element of awakening us to new ways of seeing things rather than being able to sort of live in the past, which again is what Saturn can be symbolic of. So Tiffany goes on to talk about the myth of Chiron. And she says that 
Chiron was a seeker of truth. He's, he's a half, he's a centaur. He's a half horse, half human. And according to legend, he lived in a cave with his half brother, Jupiter on Mount Pelion. Uh, his grandfather was Uranus, the sky, the sky, and his grandmother was Gaia or Gaia, the earth. Uh, he, so he was both mortal and immortal and therefore embodied a blend of animal instincts and human intellect. So that suggests something about also being able through this healing process to gain more control over those animal instincts in ourselves or those instinctive habitual uh, reactions or, or responses in ourselves uh, that allow us to blend intellect, that Uranus uh, energy um, into understanding um, our pains and our wounds in a way that allows us to really um, heal and, and move forward. So she talks about there being four distinct phases in the Chiron story, that he was uh, in isolation in his youth because he was a little bit different than the other centaurs. He, he wasn't as rowdy and spirited. Uh, he didn't really know how to fit in, which is symbolic of um, perhaps in our youth, times where we experienced alienation or um, something happened to us uh, that left us feeling isolated, alone, different, and afraid. Then the second aspect or part of Chiron is developing the inner nerd and to be of service. So it talks about how Chiron found a teacher who taught him uh, secret things uh, like about herbs and astrology and poetry and music. And so he began to feel that actually there was uh, a place for him in the world. And, and realizing that the, um, that, that he, he didn't need to feel as alienated as he had felt before. And that he could be proud of his uniqueness. And then what he was able to do was uh, eventually go back and be with his, his other uh, centaurs. But at this point, he was able to be of service to them and share with them what he had learned. And um, he became a mentor. And this is the third part of the, the Chiron journey is, um, is that uh, in this process, he actually gets wounded and uh, literally by an arrow that had poison on it. And there's, I guess, some uh, discrepancy as to whether uh, he was accidentally struck by an arrow or if he accidentally dropped it on his foot himself. Uh, but all of a sudden he had this wound and because he was both God and mortal, um, he could not fully heal. And so he had to uh, live uh, with this forever wound. But she points out here that uh, he, Chiron was faced with the decision to live forever in pain or surrender to death. So what this is bringing up is the idea of basically feeling wounded forever or figuring out how to transcend what our wounds are and what our pains are. And so this is the fourth stage, uh, his death from sacrifice to service. What happened was that Chiron offered to take the place of Prometheus, who was suffering a terrible punishment for uh, stealing fire from the gods and giving it to the mortals. And Prometheus was chained to a rock where his liver was being eaten out every day by birds and it would be uh, replaced every day. Um, and the only way he could be released is if an immortal took his place, which Chiron did. And the gods were so touched uh, that they allowed Chiron to transcend the physical, to die and be reborn in spirit. So here you can see this, this um, theme of, of, of dying to our wounds and, and transcending uh, into closer connection to being more of a spiritual warrior rather than this uh, wounded, um, 
you know, mortal where we're always feeling the suffering of what we've been through. So she says, Chiron is symbolic of a wound you are overcoming, an area you want to develop, or a secret talent you have to help others. Then she goes on to list different bullet points about what Chiron and Aries is all about. And this is what collectively we are all going through from 2018 to 2027. And Aries is the first sign of the zodiac. So it's all about uh, energy bursting forth. It's a fiery energy. It's an inspired energy. It is about self-confidence. It is about courage. It's about self-assertion. It's about um, uh, expressing our intuitive senses. Um, these are all Aryan energies. But if there's a wound related to that expression, then Chiron can, Chiron can manifest in a few different ways. And I want to go over this list that she's compiled because I think it's extremely um, brilliant and, and covers quite a bit of ground. She talks about overcoming wounds of the heart, head, and the emotional body. And part of that is because Chiron, uh, Aries does rule the physical head, but I believe what she's saying here is that, uh, you know, these are, are wounds that are, you know, echoed in, echoing in our minds that we, we relive and that there's an opportunity here to really heal the heart, the head, and the emotional body. You know, we store a lot of pain uh, from experience in our emotional body. And there are various ways that you can access those, those wounds and pains held in the body, in the energetic field that we can um, work at, at releasing. Um, there's, for example, studies done on um, PTSD and how PTSD, the experience of it is because we've stored the uh, ex ex traumatic experience in our bodies at a cellular level and we we live it and so this is suggesting that there's an opportunity to really um work at healing the emotional body during this time and taking responsibility quitting the blame game now i think this is a very interesting um point and I've been feeling this myself and, and, and I think, so for example, one of the things that happened in, uh, since Chiron's been in Aries is that the whole hashtag Me Too movement has uh, formed. Uh, that came about in October of 2018. And remember Chiron went into Aries in May of 2018. And I feel that it's, it's, part of this necessary um, healing that, you know, a lot of this suppression of the feminine energy is needing to come out and, and, and be revealed. And, you know, of course, any harm against woman needs to be um, rectified or, you know, needs to be um, taken responsibility for. But I'm also sensing, and I feel like we will continue to see this as Chiron moves through the sign of Aries for the next nine years or eight years, uh, that some of this uh, energy of um, Chiron and Aries, it's starting out as this very wounded energy. But I predict that it will transform more into this kind of healing experience. And I think part of healing is taking responsibility and quitting the blame game. And I feel that we have to, on some level, to truly heal some of these um, wounds is to forgive ourselves for, for, and take responsibility for our part if any, in, in these situations, like, you know, um, you know, it, it is very sensitive to talk about, but as a woman, I know that I've certainly, 
gone after things, you know, that's very Aries, you know, we want something, we want to go after it. And we've sort of played with that edge of power and how can we get what we want from a situation? Um, you know, and I, and I feel like we need to really be able to look very honestly at situations and, and own our part in co-creating certain situations that have um, manifested. And I wanted to play, um, I wanted to play a clip from Demi Moore talking about her book that came out maybe about four months ago. And she's talking about it on Ellen and the Ellen show. And what she says is that, you know, Ellen's questioning her about, you know, the, the, the experiences she went through in her marriage to Ashton Kutcher because he cheated on her. And, um, and, and she's talking very honestly about her role in the situation. And I find it very admirable because I feel like it's Chiron and Aries uh, coming through in, in what she's sharing about taking responsibility for our part in situations. Yeah. So you just, and, and even though the infidelity and even though these things that you just, you loved him, you wanted to keep the relationship going and you just tried to, to keep it going in that way. Yeah, I think that is it. I think, you know, it was, um, it was a misguided sense of not really wanting to look maybe at the harder question right. or maybe the, 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 what was really missing or in my case because i really felt like i had created an addiction to him mm -hmm. that i was a you know that my codependency in a way i'd never had before i mm -hmm. never had that kind of attachment yeah um i think a lot of i think a lot of people so there she is sharing about um her part in this situation and if if you look down here uh one of the bullet points for how we're offered to uh to work through these themes is healing codependency and letting freedom ring and i again just applaud her for being so honest about her her role in that situation and not coming across as the complete victim um, of somebody who you know did something to her and she absolutely had no uh pardon it you know she's very honestly sharing about um how she could see her her role in in wanting to really maintain something that just was not was not working anymore so taking responsibility and quitting the blame game the third one is finding ways to do it yourself to do it yourself that's very aries and uh, this can be another way that Chiron and Aries plays itself out, you know, realizing that maybe we don't need to rely on the same ways of things happening and uh, doing it ourselves. And the next one is empowerment, improving our self-worth. And again, I mean, that's very much Aries. Aries is about our... our um, self-worth to a certain extent, our belief in ourselves, our belief that we can do things, uh, accomplish things, achieve things. So it's about really uh, tapping into that uh, personal empowerment and applying ourselves and uh, through that process, feeling uh, a regeneration of our own self-worth. Removing self-seeking motives. You know, that can be a very uh, Aryan thing. It's like uh, you want something and that is your, you know, line of sight. It's, it's, it's what you're going to get. It's what you're going to go after. Um, but that can, that can lead to trouble uh, if, if our motivation is purely self-seeking. Um, we're not uh, really thinking of the whole. We're not thinking of the group. We're not thinking of others. We're just thinking of of ourselves and um, that is being suggested as something that could be healed uh, during this Chiron and Aries time. Now that isn't to say 
that isn't to say that you shouldn't, you know, go after things in life because I mean, that is, that is what part of what we're here doing. You know, it's, it's that we, um, you know, we all have a, a path and we all are on our own personal path, but because Chiron does relate to a more uh, transcendent awareness, I think what this is suggesting is that if inside we know that, that what's motivating us is truly just um, about our self-fulfillment, that, uh, you know, that isn't necessarily the healthiest way to go about things. And it's not necessarily what's going to produce the, the best results for us or for others. Developing innovative approaches, becoming the maverick of your field. So remember, uh, Chiron studied and he became really good at certain um, things. And so this is saying that you can use this, this energy of Aries, this really bursting forth and taking initiative to become very good at something that, um, that, you, that you might be drawn towards. And again, she wrote Tiffany about, he found a teacher who taught him things he secretly geeked out on, herbs, astrology, poetry, music. He began to see there was a place for him in this world after all. So it's, again, it's kind of like trusting that, that um, you're unique and your uniqueness has a gift to bring to the world and that you can develop uh, these innovative approaches uh, through your uniqueness and become a, you know, a maverick of your field, to become somebody who sort of stands out because you're really approaching this, uh, whatever it is, in a, in a unique and interesting way. And that's what Uranus is all about. Again, Chiron's in between Saturn and Uranus, and Uranus is all about, I mean, it, it rotates on its side this way. That's how it rotates on its axis. So it's just different. And so this is inspiring us to really move towards those uh, unique parts of ourselves. Embracing spiritual warrior energy is the next one she writes about. And I see this, a spiritual warrior, um, I think we have to ask Crescent, what is that? You know, well, warrior is the, is the Aries energy, but spiritual warrior, the way I interpret this is, is about having a, a bigger awareness, a, a larger awareness, which Uranus, again, is all about, that helps us to transcend experiences and not hold on out of sort of Aryan ways of like, I want to, I feel like, you know, like a baby crying or, a, you know, not getting its way. You know what I mean? Like that kind of energy. It's just lower vibration energy that we all have an opportunity to hear to kind of um, transcend and to uh, move more into a spiritual warrior. And it's all about energy. You know, it's all about um, how we interact with others' energy and, and how we respond to it and whether or not we resist it or we uh, go with it, you know? I think that's very much what the spiritual warrior does. You know, they don't, uh, they don't fight about um, lower energy things, you know what I mean? It's like, it's about elevating and, and through acceptance of whatever it is, uh, but moving, moving on, you know, and not staying stuck in the resistance. I would also say it's about waking up spiritual warrior energy. It's about being very present. I mean, that is very uh, Aries. It's, it's about the consciousness being very present always. And when we can kind of just watch what's going on in our field rather than reacting to it so quickly. I think that's very much a, a spiritual warrior uh, consciousness is practicing our presence in our life. And of course we can do that through things like meditation or um, 
other you know, techniques that help us to uh, become more awake and aware. Developing power through discipline. I'll just leave that one at that. Overcoming a need to be headstrong first or right. Being of service to the herd. Allowing a death of the ego. That's very interesting uh, with, with Aries, uh, with Chiron and Aries, allowing the death of the ego. Um, I'm not sure what else to say about that. I think it's very poignant just the way that that is. Facing addiction, let go of your death wish. That seems to be a big one uh, right now, I feel. Um, and I want to share another clip from another uh, person in the limelight, Jessica Simpson. But first, I want to talk about let go of your death wish. I think that's very inter an interesting way of looking at addiction, having a death wish. It's like your wound is so big that you don't even want to be here. And so you just do your addictive behavior because you just don't even feel connected to anything inside of you. Um, and and it, it, becomes, it becomes a death wish. So she's talking about letting go of your death, with death wish by facing, facing addiction. Um, You know, and this is interesting because it's kind of contrary because I think you have to have an ego to a certain extent in your life in order to feel like, yes, I deserve to live, you know, you have to have that. So perhaps allowing a death of the um, excessive ego might be a better way of saying that uh, because I think when you're facing addiction and letting go of your own death wish, I mean, you have to find a connection inside of yourself to something that you do believe in inside or to maybe you want to call it your ego, you know, but, but you have to start loving yourself. You know, you have to start valuing yourself. You have to start believing that you're, you have some worth. Um, and I think that does involve some ego. Um, but facing addiction, letting go of your death wish. So Jessica Simpson just put out a book. And she is, uh, it's called Open Book. And she talks about how uh, she went through a, uh, uh, a facing of her addiction to alcohol in two, uh, October of 2017. And she's now a couple of years sober. But again, here we have uh, Chiron and Aries playing itself out with somebody who is very openly talking about um, how they were really suffering and how they uh, had to really face themselves honestly in order to start moving forward. Most of us think we know you, mm -hmm. and yet you've developed this incredible strength that's allowed you to come here and tell us who the real Jessica Simpson is. Why? How'd you get it? Um, I truly had to find a place in my life where I had compassion for myself. And um, there's so many things about ourselves that we do keep private. Even though I am a public figure, I was keeping things to myself, whether it be anxiety or sexual abuse or uh, like drinking too much. Um, I I needed to face all of those monsters and own it and own your mistakes. And I'm leading with my mistakes. And I think not leading with perfectionism takes a lot of pressure off of anyone. So there you have it. Um, I feel that's very Chiron and Aries uh, energy. We've already talked about healing codependency. Let freedom ring. And again, I think with Chiron and Aries around codependency, I think there's something to be healed. 
it's like trying to find define ourselves through another person and rather than coming to a relationship uh feeling your own wholeness now i don't know that we're ever fully whole and and but I, I, I do think right now there's definitely a theme with Chiron and Aries where we're sort of seeing that we do have to love ourselves first and we do have to empower ourselves and we do have to do things for ourselves and quit blaming others. And, you know, these are things that we need to process and go through collectively in order to be able to come to relationships uh, with just a better foundation uh, on which to build. Reaching for the light. I think that is about becoming more conscious, uh, whatever that means to you, but bringing more light and awareness into our being and into our life. And finally, look for rainbows as your cosmic reminder that all things are possible after the storm. So the last few things she says is, Aries holds the Mars vibration of energy drive and stamina. Be ready to tackle problems with a headfirst approach during this eight year period. Limitation and stagnation will be crazy makers during this period. Find a way to move energy and prana with healthy physical outlets, martial arts, yoga, etc. And she says, the search for identity is a big theme during this period. Look for mentors, mentors who can help you reach independence. Ask yourself bigger questions. Know this, the response will unfold slowly over time. You don't have to know it all right now. Look for synchronicities, messages, and dreams, and read inspirational books, all great ways to ignite the process of determining your purpose. Be willing to move forward by doing the next right thing, not the next thing right. And the last thing I wanted to share was another clip that I found that I think also speaks to this um, Chiron in Aries time. And maybe going back to this list, it speaks to taking responsibility and quitting the blame game. Um, Joaquin Phoenix recently won the Oscar for his role as the Joker in a movie called Joker. And he, uh, this is his acceptance speech. And I like what he has to say in it because I think he eloquently talks about how sometimes in this Chiron and Aries energy of like really needing to heal, we all kind of have our own different wounds that we're trying to heal. But he has an eloquent way of saying, we're all really we're all really trying to heal is the bottom line and that we can encourage each other, not by necessarily feeling like we all have these separate little uh, places from which our wounds are um, the most important perhaps, but that, that we can just encourage each other to heal collectively um, rather than feeling so isolated in our, in our, in our wounds. And, I'll let you hear it here. He says it best. I've been thinking a lot about some of the distressing issues that we are facing collectively. And I think at times we feel or we're made to feel that we champion different causes. But for me, I see commonality. I think whether we're talking about gender inequality or racism, or queer rights, or indigenous rights, or animal rights, we're talking about the fight against injustice. We're talking about the fight against the belief that one nation, one people, one race, one gender, or one species has the right to dominate, control, and use and exploit another with impunity. Um, I think that we've become very disconnected from the natural world. And many of us, what we're guilty of is an egocentric worldview 
the belief that we're the center of the universe, we go into the natural world and we plunder it for its resources. We feel entitled to artificially inseminate a cow. And when she gives birth, we steal her baby. Even though her cries of anguish are unmistakable. And then we take her milk that's intended for a calf and we put it in our coffee and our cereal. And I think we fear the idea of personal change because we think that we have to sacrifice something to give something up. But human beings at our best are so inventive and creative and ingenious. And I think that when we use love and compassion as our guiding principles, we can create, develop, and implement systems of change that are beneficial to all sentient beings and to the environment. Now, I have been, I've been a scoundrel in my life. I've been selfish. I've been cruel at times, hard to work with, and ungrateful. But so many of you in this room have given me a second chance. And I think that's when we're at our best, when, when we support each other, not when we cancel each other out for past mistakes, but when we help each other to grow, when we educate each other, when we guide each other towards redemption. That is the best of humanity. Okay, so I feel he's talking there about about Chiron and Aries, really, because again, Uranus, which is on the other side of Chiron, is the energy of humanity. And so somehow in, in facing our own wounds and facing our own um, challenges around lack of self-worth or not feeling like we can express our, our spirit or, or identity or not knowing what that is or um, you know, having that been s s squashed as a younger person and, and, and not healing from that, uh, that we ended up acting it out in so many different ways. Um, and, he, you know, he was talking about even himself being, you know, ungrateful and being difficult and that kind of thing. And how, uh, in his eyes, the, the transformation comes through, um, uh, really, you know, forgiving one another and really accept, forgiving ourselves. I mean, that's what Jessica Simpson was talking about in her video. Uh, and, and also, he was pointing out reconnecting with, um, with the natural world. And I wanted to end with this point uh, that right now in the sky we've got um chiron at three degrees of aries in a semi-sextile which is 30 degrees relationship to uranus in taurus and uranus and taurus this is all about what we're moving into with having to come up with ways of addressing climate change, for example, because Taurus is all about the earth and it's about the natural world. And Uranus is again, like inventiveness and awakening and discovering. And so it's bringing up this way that we need, you know, what we need to address essentially uh, regarding all of that. Uh, it's, it's changing our values. That's what Taurus is all about too. But the Chiron, the wound in relationship to that, because it's in a 30 degree angle and it's going to be in this relationship, Chiron's going to be in this relationship with Uranus from February 11th, which is uh, today, until July 20th. So he's almost like linking this Chiron and Aries um, selfishness, acting out of woundedness, uh, energy with how we've, we kind of connect or disconnect from the, the natural world and, and this need to somehow, um, bring the two together. You know, the, the, the 30 degree angle is a, um, is a 
a bit of an ease and it's an opportunity. So I find his statement about needing to reconnect to the natural world, a part of that um, Chiron and Aries connected to the Uranus and Taurus through the sextile at this time. So that's my discussion of Chiron and Aries. I hope that you enjoyed it. If you like my channel, please subscribe. And if you have anything to add, please do in the comments. I really appreciate you watching and I'll see you next time. Take care.